Welcome to InspiredInsider.com. In this interview, I want you to pay attention to what Jeremy says and because they listen to their customers, what the one major reason the customers were purchasing the first software product that caused them to create the whole new software. Also, find out why he initially created the software application for PC and not Mac and what he found out from Skype. Also, watch until the end because you'll see a special guest that joins us and I included it in the outtakes. That and much more right now. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with another Jeremy, Jeremy Haig. He's co-founded three successful software applications which extend the functionality of Skype. He's a CEO and co-founder of VodBurner, CallBurner, and Skyluck. Right now we are using VodBurner as I speak. VodBurner is the most popular product that records Skype video calls on Windows. They had a sale the other day, just a fun fact here, they had a sale the other day in a country that Jeremy didn't know existed in the Faroe Islands. This, their software is used in six out of the seven continents. I don't think they've, they've yet to get a sale in Antarctica, but they're working on that. So if anyone's there from Antarctica, buy it so they can say seven out of seven. A fun fact about Jeremy is that he's had sideburns since high school, and his corporate look is trimming the sideburns just a little bit, maybe like an inch. Jeremy, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, uh, Jeremy. It's always good to talk with another Jeremy. We're not that common. <laughs> it's great. Um, now we get a lot of you know a lot of comments from people. They have tons of ideas. They don't know where to start, or they have a current product or service, and they're trying to get traction, sales, and revenue. And it may not be growing as fast as they want. Um, sometimes there's that fear of failure, embarrassment from family and friends. And you guys have created not one but three successful software products. So I knew you'd be the perfect person to talk about going from that idea to making that first sale and beyond. So the first thing I want you to talk to everyone about is how'd you come up with the idea for VodBurner? Well, um, this is a pretty cool story. We've been working with Skype now for eight years and it was about uh, four years in, so about halfway, um, I was in Greece, in Athens, and Skype were having this, uh, you know, event, and they were talking about how they just launched um, video calling. Because Skype didn't used to have video, it was, you know, audio only, but now everyone just uses video on Skype, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. But this is sort of going back uh, you know, four years ago, and we were, uh, I was in Athens, it was sun and just an awesome, um, you know, conference, and they were saying that video was on, it had just come out, and it was on like 10% of all the Skype calls, people are doing video, um, and their forecast for the next year was it would go up to 25%. So I thought, okay, well, this is, you know, Skype has millions of users, you know, if it's going to be on 25% of all calls, we should really be looking at that. So we, I went back to Australia and we started VodBurner. And then uh, it just took off like wildfire, the, the video. Now video is on 50% of all Skype calls. And over Christmas time, it, 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 it peaks above that hmm. um, the people are, want to talk to their families and, and, and so forth so yeah that was really where they, you have to have the idea and then build the product and hopefully it's at the time when there's a you know right you have to sort of be the right time right place right time right so you saw that kind of they, they talked about that upward trend and you're like we need to do something around this why, I mean, you could do a lot of things with video. Why the video recording? What, what made you decide to go with that particular product? So we already had two products around Skype. Um, and 
Call Burner was before VOD Burner. So Call Burner is really good audio recorder. So we were thinking about adding video to Call Burner, but we had some pretty big ideas around video. Not just the recording of it, but editing it mm-hmm. and uploading it to YouTube. At that time, YouTube was you know, really big, and, and now it's even bigger. So really, it was we, we sort of scoped out a whole another product so and then we can sell that product um, as a as a separate item a new a separate brand um, all those things um, so call burner still sells well but it's mainly for people that they're doing you know phone conference calling you know this sort of thing or they're doing podcasting without the video part yeah and they want to uh, record that so we had enough meat to make a video product because of the recording, the editing, and the upload to YouTube. So it's really sort of three parts to it. Um, and then VODBurner was born. That makes sense. So what, with call, when you talk about call burner, then, what, where did you come up with the, the pain or need that people were having with the call burner? What made you decide to come out with something that recorded that? Do you remember? So call burner came out uh, because first off we had Skylook. Uh, Skylook was a Microsoft Outlook integration and we put recording in there as a side feature um, and then people really wanted to do the recording without the Outlook part. Hmm. So you can sort of learn a lot just from getting a product out and, and hearing what uh, users want, definitely. Um, so yeah, call burner, um, that's how that uh, you know, came, came came to fruition. Yeah, so you saw people buying the Skylook, and they didn't even want the integration. They just wanted that recording feature. That's great. Exactly, and we even had people saying, you know, I, I use Gmail, but I've got Outlook, and I run Outlook when I want to use your software to record uh, calls. <laughs> so, so it's sort of crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, so we have to listen to our customers, make sure we listen up and what they're buying and why. Um, totally. So obviously, you have a successful, you know, software product and company. But a lot of people may be starting out and kind of trying to get traction. What was a moment that they could relate to early on when it felt nearly impossible to get customer sale, or you hit a big roadblock in the company? So early on, we had Bod Burner out, and we had these broadcasters. Um, one that comes to mind is Channel 10 in Australia. Mm-hmm. Actually, actually went and met them and showed them our software, and they loved it, um, and they were ready to you know, buy. Um, but in their back end, like their, their studio, they have uh, all Macs. So a lot of these broadcasters, um, all the video um, is done on Mac, and we have totally weren't there on Mac. Um, so that was an opportunity where we could have, you know, if we had have released the Mac version as well, um, we could have picked up those uh, sales. And these are with, you know, big broadcasters. Um, some big broadcasters use Windows, and that's fine. We, we picked up those. But, um, yeah, certainly on the Mac side. And they sort of expect to take you seriously, you really need to have both. Um, so, yeah, it's that's it was sort of... Uh, pretty big roadblock. Yeah, that early is. Early on, what made you decide early on to go with Windows as opposed to Mac? Well, it's a bit funny, Jeremy. I'm actually a big Mac guy, so. <laughs> yeah, that is. So. Uh, yeah, so we, our main developer, which is my business partner. So we're only two guys. Um, he's he's Windows guy, and I guess I had to really, uh, you know go with that uh, but now he's a Mac guy as well and, and we're doing stuff on yeah. Mac now But um, probably at the was, time I would think more people I don't know, maybe more people were using Windows based than, than Mac I would think definitely, in fact it's it's interesting I think I say Mac now is about 12% which is very still very not much, but in terms of creatives um a lot more creatives use Mac. 
And a lot of these uh, video production, you know, in, in broadcasters and stuff, done on Mac. Yeah. But, um, yeah, at the time, uh, we didn't really know that much about anything. And it was just, we were so proud to get a product out on, on Windows um, and started selling, you know, straight away. So there's, the market with Skype is so big, Windows or Mac, you know, there's there's millions of, you know, Skype users out there. So what was, I mean, obviously these, the big, um, you know, Channel 10 and some of these news places, they want Mac. So why didn't you just come out with the Mac version? What was holding you back from that? So we've um, we've been two guys within the company. We've never taken on any funding. We've had people come and talk to us about that. So when you're like that, it's great because you don't have to make you make decisions that you want to do, and you don't have to answer to some VC that's that's sunk you know ten million dollars into your company. Um, but where it sucks is you only have limited manpower, and you have to make decisions that are um, you can't make the decisions you would like to. Like I would have loved to have brought out a Mac version, you know, from day one, and maybe if you had a team of ten guys, you know, it's certainly achievable. Right. So it's sort of this thing about control and the trade-off with, um, you know, not having the ten million dollars there to to put on right. a big team and have the scaled up manpower. Um, right, you have to focus your efforts yeah. on only certain things. Going from that roadblock, I mean, you're coming up with these companies that want the Mac version. Tell us what, how you got your first sale. Maybe maybe start with Skylux since that was your first product. Yeah, so this is a good story. Right back, you know, eight years ago. We're actually turning eight next week. Wow. So it's Congrats. Pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. In the software industry, is that like a hundred? What is that? Is that like? Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get great now. <laughs> if you're getting that, but, uh, I'm 34, so I'm probably over the hill now in terms of people like Mark Zuckerberg and stuff. You know, right. They like, right. I don't know. So yeah, so we um, so we put out Skylook. This is right at the start of the company. This is our Microsoft Outlook integration, and. It was two days afterwards, a sale came in, and um, there was this guy in Norway, and here we are in, in Melbourne, Australia, um, I was like 26, um, and it was funny because this guy, he says great products, I think it, I think at the time it was 50 bucks for, for Skylook, um, it's gone up in price since then. And he said uh, he really wants to have it work with this Norwegian uh, characters, you know, like a character set who was, wasn't working properly or something. So tell people so what he, Skylook is, just for the if they don't know what it, what it does. So Skylook, is, it brings Microsoft Outlook and Skype together. Okay. So if I get an email from you instead of replying in Outlook, I can just call you. Hmm. And it puts a new contact list in there of all your Skype people, and it records those uh, calls and puts an MP3 in where our emails are that we've had in our conversation thread. So yeah, we had this uh, Norwegian guy buy it, and he says great products, um, but it would be great if it had this Norwegian uh, characters support. So yeah, we 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 talked to this guy and we put it in there straight away, it was relatively easy uh, to do. So anyway, that the next night I sort of went to sleep and I kept, I was thinking, oh, I really want to go onto my computer and check, you know, if, if we've had any more sales. Um, so then the next day we had one or two sales um, as well. So then the next night I was thinking, oh, wow, what's going to happen tomorrow? Is it going to, you know, the sky's the limit sort of thing. So that was really exciting. Because it's exciting when you have an idea and you make it, and then somebody actually, you know, gives you their hard-earned dollars okay. um, for the, for the idea. It's very, it's one of the most rewarding, you know, experiences I've ever had. And that you know, over the eight years, it, it's this every sale is is good, but those ones right at the start, they're the ones you sort of remember for sure. What was an interesting use uh, for? You saw an initial sale for Vodburner that, that someone used it for. 
Yeah, so early in Vodburner we had um, uh, troops, so U.S. troops in um, you know, Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff. And this guy told us um, he used our software to actually uh, record the, he, the birth of his child. Wow. <laughs> so this blew us away. Um, he contacted us... Um, and told us about it, but yeah, he so he's over there and and his wife's you know in the hospital and and they did Skype. Um, I think they have uh, pretty good setups for the the troops. We actually have a a, a, a lot of customers that are in the military because um, they must obviously rely on Skype a lot, right? And they want to uh, want to record those you know, special moments. So that was something that. Totally didn't see that coming, and yeah, it's just amazing. That's a, that must be a must have been a graphic video. Um, yeah, I don't know how much uh, what was captured exactly, but uh, <laughs> I didn't see the see the video. Good. Uh, <laughs> what was the time, Jeremy? That uh, with the small team, obviously you have to allocate resources accordingly. What was the time that you when you made a sale that you maybe spent too much time? Producing features that maybe you you could have spent on other things, spent time on other things. Yeah. So one thing we've learned, we, so we have a lot of like thousands of customers, and they're all buying like a fifty dollar product or a hundred dollar product. We don't have like too many like big ones. Right. But we uh, so there's a company I met with in um, in New York, and they had bought our software and they wanted us to make. Uh, the software do some more stuff, so we met with them, and um, it was a fairly substantial request. So we uh, came back here, and we made a top priority um, to do this. Um, and it turns out that uh, the guy that we were working with is no longer with the company, and that sort of fell in a hole. Um, so it's not used. So yeah, sometimes uh, big companies. Uh, they sort of have these all these agendas happening on one day, and then the next day it's you know it's no longer. So you have to be careful of that, and you have to keep listening to all the in our case all the little guys that are, are coming through all the time and, and buying our software, and try and make features that sort of fit across a lot of people rather than custom you know features um, around one uh, customer. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, you because know, sometimes we get starstruck and wow, like this is a huge customer, and they're we gotta like cater to what they want. And from what you're saying is, we just need to kind of focus on the masses, I guess, so to speak. Um, is that right? Totally right. You know, some companies you might have it might be a different model. You might have three main clients where you really sort of hamstrung uh, to those three clients. If you piss one off or, or one of them falls out of favor, you're sort of screwed, right? You're up the creek, so yeah. We always wanted to have a model, and this is conducive with the Skype model where there's just millions of people um, on there, and, you know, for them to pay 50 bucks, it's not a massive decision. I mean, that's take your family out for dinner, you know, pay 50 bucks easy. Um yeah, so it's Yeah, I mean rem I remember when I when I purchased Vodburner, it was like a no brainer. I mean you don't think twice about it. I actually think it's I mean, I hate to say this, but it's like it's inexpensive, you know, for people I think. Yeah, well the Skype market, um a lot because Skype gives you so much for free, we have an expectation um that our, some people think our software should even be free. Um, or some people think it costs too much. Some people think it's just right, and some people would yeah. would pay more for it. I'm but. surprised, actually. I'm really surprised because, again, like you guys are really quick at providing support too. So, like, I'd be scared if it was free a little bit because I want to pay you so that you can, you know, provide the support or make new additions and things like that. And that's my mindset. Well, that's, that's what I, you know, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's interesting. I read this article in Wired um, it's a while ago now, but it's it's about how the web's 
coming down to zero and, and the freemium nature of things. Um, but yeah, we, we are fairly, very well priced for really, when you talk about video recording and editing, the, there's apps up in the sort of thousand dollar mark. If you look at Avid and Sony Vegas and these ones. Mm. So we're, you know, our hundred bucks, um, we give awesome support and we get a lot of customers. Um, then you sort of hear from these other customers that are a little unrealistic, you know, in, uh, in what they, you know, expect. I don't know if that's because of Skype being so free right. or they just, there's always people around like that. For sure. <laughs> what was a time, now we talked about some of the roadblocks and some of the, you know, those first sales. What was a time where you got a pivotal sale or a, a big connection? that you remember? Yeah, so when we we were sort of really got to know the Skype guys, um, so, so sales we sort of have, the, they're all, there's a mix of, you know, home users and, and broadcasters and, and stuff like that. But where it was actually pivotal, um, Skype sort of took notice of us and they have a broadcast team and these guys go around with, you know, when Skype was on Oprah and, uh, this sort of thing, um, they this broadcast team set all that stuff up, and now you see Skype on so many TV shows um, that you know it's sort of normal now for them to have a guest Skype in and 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 do all that. And when they're doing the the TV production, they they, they record all that, um, you know. So the broadcast team at Skype there's a guy there, Matt Jordan, and he really took us under uh, his wing and, and opened up a lot of doors um, because we're the leading, you know, video recorder for Skype. Right. Skype don't have their own video recording um, in the product, so it's sort of a win-win that they can take the, pro- the you know, the product to, to these, these companies that are trying to figure out how to do it. So, yeah, he was really pivotal in um, helping us sort of get to that, you know, next level Um and, and getting us connected because a lot of companies just go to Skype directly you know like hey guys how do we right. do this Skype actually have a, a guide on how to do it and Bodburn is featured in there oh wow uh, so yeah that was that was pretty awesome for us so who are some of the people the broadcast team reaches out to you mentioned Oprah who are, who are some of the other ones <sighs> yeah well they work with um, Alan and Jimmy Kimmel and uh, yeah this Larry King um all these different shows. Wow. And then they go to like, I think Matt's in Russia at the moment. So Russia Today, they, they use it, um, all are really across the world. Yeah. Um, I think it's funny. There's a video Skype had of, um, is it deal or no deal or one of those? I've shows. heard it. Yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. And they have all the different deal or no deals around the world. It might, might not be that show, but it's funny because they have all the different um, people Skyping in um, on there too. So. so tell Matt to go to Antarctica and find someone there. Yeah. <laughs> just need that one. Be, uh, just need that one. So, what's yeah, the yeah. – Jeremy, what's one of the big milestones that you, hit, you remember that you're like, wow, I can't believe these people are using us? So the, probably the biggest one – it was probably about a year ago that the Prime Minister of Australia, hmm. um, Julia Gillard, she, um, well, they, their office uh, contacted us. That was actually funny. I was I was coming back from the UK, so I'm in Dubai in the Middle East waiting to get on my next flight, and my phone's ringing, and it's all, you know, top priority. But um, they contacted Skype, and Skype put them in touch with us, um, wow. and they're doing... Uh, she did a video call with a uh, gridiron player, um, Australian guy. Um, so yeah, I got home and I had to, I was sort of like jet lagged, but the next morning I went and met with the Prime Minister's office and went inside and, uh, it was all like top security and, um, so yeah, it was really interesting actually to see how it all works. I didn't actually get to meet the Prime Minister, but I met the chief speechwriter and sort of all the tech people. Um, you know, it's so tech now with people. I met the people that do the tweets, people that do the Facebook, and wow. you know, all this sort of stuff. You saw the inside well, scoop so. to the to the office, and how did they do the social media? Exactly, yeah. So it was uh, 
that was a real, you know, real trip. And one more recently, um, the Guns N' Roses guitarist uh-huh. on Twitter, wow. he, um, he, we were talking with him that he does Skype video uh, lessons of how to play guitar. And, uh, yeah, he, um, so we've had some interesting, you know, folks like that. Um, that's fun to know, see. That's fun to see when there people like that are using your product that you created from scratch. Um, now, going from that to you know some of those big connections and sales, what are some of the pitfalls that you hit? Because it obviously wasn't always like that. You know, it takes time to get that you know to that level. What were some of the a failure or pitfalls that you wish you would have avoided? Yeah. So one that comes to mind, um, really, Paul and I. Paul being my business partner, we're, we're two product guys, so we sort of make the product and make it really good and, and, and try and make what customers want and offer great support. Um, like, we'll even get back to you within 24 hours, even over a weekend. But the w- area that we suck at is advertising. So we've, in the past, we've tried to spend money on, you know, Google AdWords and Bing and these sorts of things um, to sort of, sort of bring more customers in. So we're sort of, we've been growing it organically and people via word of mouth, you know, like yourself and we get reviews on software blogs and all that's great. But um, obviously companies do advertising as well. And we've tried that a few times. It's always been a pitfall. We've, We've um, spent, you know, money on ads, and we it just all goes, and we get very little back. We get clicks from Afghanistan and, and these sorts of places. They're um, using like Skype in a cave somewhere. <laughs> yeah, like Osama bin and, Laden. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And um, we've even tried to get smarter about that and, and refine it more. But advertising is tough, and um, we pretty much we've been burned a few times on it. Um, burn means we spent money and, and got very little, if anything, back. So we sort of rely on uh, word of mouth and making the product sort of sell itself. Right. But the, the trick with actually making money is you have to have a good product and, and people have to know about it. And sort of, if you just don't have one of those of the two, then you're not really going to go anywhere. So, yeah. It's, so what do you say? Like, when do you stop? trying because what if okay what if you know it's going to pay off in the end when do you stop the google ads like at what point did you were like you we have to cut it off like at what point do you spend or uh number of days what what happened with that yeah so we've probably gone back two or three times now and um it's probably getting better each time um we sort of set an amount that we're prepared to spend, and once that's gone, we sort of, you know, review it <laughs> afterwards. It's I'm not saying we won't go back there, but um, yeah, it's something that we're both not very good at, and we probably should hire somebody who, is, if you've got somebody who's good at that stuff, like Google Ads is a whole world, right? There's so much stuff, you know, in there that you, you can't, unless you're like, that's what you do and, and, and you know it all but if you're sort of wearing a lot of hats like we do then so there's probably a lesson in there in you know um, so tr- doing what you're good at and if, you, if you're going into an area that you're unsure about sort of limit your losses sort of cap how much you'll, you'll spend on that um, right because every, every day in the company there's you know there's so many different things to do um, you probably can't give advertising the full attention it, it deserves what about that's on the advertising spray in the word side? What about on the product side, where you maybe hit a, a pitfall or that you wish you had avoided? So when we first came out with Vod Burner, we sort of made this assumption that there's a sort of standard of PC and it's a certain spec. So I'm talking about a computer that sort of everybody would have. And we sort of designed VOD Burner for that level. And we quickly found out that a lot of people have crappy PCs um, that are either 
uh, they're old or they're new ones, but they have, you know, they're, they're, they're slowed right down with malware, uh, bit rot and malware and all this, you know, they've got viruses on them and all this sort of stuff. So when we released Fiveburner, we sort of re-engineered it um, to make it work. This is after it was released, but made it work with um, older PCs as well as uh, newer PCs. And the way we did that was actually pretty tricky. Um, if you have an old PC, Bodburner does the heavy lifting after you hang up the Skype call. So by heavy lifting, I mean actually getting the video and putting it into a file. So if you're on an old PC, we get the video, but we're not really doing any processing on it. Um, and then when you go in and open it up, afterwards to watch it back it says please wait and we do sort of all the processing um, on, on the video then. If you're on a new PC um, it's powerful enough to do the processing while we're while Skype's rolling um, and then you don't have to have, you have to wait afterwards. But on the at the start on slower PCs it was trying to do too much and it was actually sort of slowing Skype you know down. And that's why now we have um, you know, the best recording. We don't impact the Skype experience, you know, at all. Um, so. Yeah, I think it would be hard to do, to kind of do, get like configured to like crappy PCs. Like I was thinking, how would you even do that? But that makes sense. Yeah, well, the trade off is um, on a crappy PC, you have larger files. And that was not a bad trade off, actually, because. Generally, these days, hard disks are so cheap and people have big hard disks, right? So it makes a big file and then it gets rid of it later sort of thing. So what are some, kind of on that note, what are some features or items that users demanded that if you weren't listening to the customers, you would have never realized? Yeah, so when we came out with Vodburner, it had sort of features in there that, that we thought people would want. And we generally hit the mark on most of those, but one thing um, was people wanted to be able to get like my video in one file and your video in another file. And that the reason being, um, sometimes if I'm interviewing, you might just want to get the other person in it and not you, and you just play it back later as you can hear both people, but it's just the talent Right um, on the screen. Yes. So that was a, 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 a thing that we we built in. Um, you know. Um, so how do you decide that? How do you decide that? Because you probably get tons of requests. What's the process? Yeah, you so, we, so we've got a really high tech process for for doing that. Not really. Um, we hear the ideas from people, and we put them in a spreadsheet. And then we sort the spreadsheet by how many times we've heard that idea. So if this idea is we've heard it from 16 different people, then that, that's the one we work on next. Got it. Um, you sort of have to just make decisions. When, if you have a product that's got scale and um, you know hundreds of thousands of people, um, yeah, you sort of need to make decisions that fits everybody. Right. And you might hear this great idea from one guy, and you know it's you never hear it from anyone else. You sort of can't really, you know, get down to to that because it's always the ones that are sixteen and twenty, right. and this sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you've always been pretty good about listening to the customer because some people may hear a feedback from someone and that sounds cool to them, so then they start creating it. Whereas you have that, even though it's not high tech, it's like a very methodical system of. Whatever the most requests are, that's what we're going to work on, which makes perfect sense, actually. Yeah, well, um, I don't say that. I don't think we're perfect at it. We certainly could do more surveys, and we've done surveys and uh, and stuff in the past. And sometimes it's, it's interesting what you can learn. I have Skype calls with people, and that sometimes weirds them out. But I talk to we we'll talk to people, customers all over, and um, they'll say, you know. Uh, this is what I'm actually using it for. And when you can 
sometimes when you see what they're using it for, um, that's really interesting in terms of oh, so you you don't do you don't use that feature, oh, but you you use that feature a lot and you want that feature. So yeah, it's in a perfect world, I would sort of talk to customers, you know, like have a day out of my five day work week where that's all I do. You yeah. know, you, you can certainly. Learn I think a lot once of... you stop doing, yeah, I think once you stop doing that and you're sort of in your ivory tower, then it's sort of, you know, yeah, that's really not good. Well, what would you recommend, Jeremy, for someone listening right now, and they want to get traction, they want to possibly make their first sale? What would be what what should they start doing right now to get on that path? Yeah, so it's a great time now to. Do a startup and and make, you know, a- apps is very hot at the moment on mobile. Um, there's sort of two ways you can go about it. Say if you're making, a, you know, Angry Birds, um, you can go in and make like a hundred levels and make all these uh, really involved game and then release it. Um, or you can sort of make one level and show sort of where the thing's going. Um, but you can get it out a lot quicker. Now, I would recommend to get that first sale, get the product out quickly, even if it doesn't have all the things in there that, that you think it needs. Um, but by getting it out there quickly, it, it might take you six months instead of two years first. And secondly, um, you can gauge uh, from customers, you know, maybe they don't want to have those all those features in there and they want to have different features. So really sales um, is really customer driven and get your product out quicker than later, even if it's not what you think is great because then you can use that customer feedback to, to to steer it in the way it should go. Yeah, so what was the time when you did that, where you got it out quick? So we've just done that now. We've just got out our Mac version of VodBurner. So we did the Mac version for VodBurner in about four or five months, whereas the ver- the Windows version of VodBurner took about 14 months. So the Mac version doesn't have as much bells and whistles in there um, at this point, but um, we wanted to get it out quicker and then... Um, put hooks so you can put stuff in your product which sort of shows what it's going to have um, but uh, you can then, then if people click on that it takes them to a page that says you know coming soon um, this sort of thing and you can sort of use that to your advantage because you can sort of count if you use Google Analytics or something like that you can see how much traffic's coming in there mm-hmm. engage sort of how interesting it is. Do you remember one but, of those things with VodBurner that you included in there? Like one of those features see, you added in? We've, so we've sort of got smarter on that lately. So VodBurner for Windows, we did put a lot of sort of features in there, um, whereas the Mac version that we've just put out, we, we got that out a lot quicker. So that's probably something that um, we've sort of learned more about you know, in the last sort of couple of years. Mm-hmm. What are some of the tools, I mean, people are interested, obviously you produce software. What are some of the tools and software you actually use daily and, and for your business? So we obviously use Skype and, and VodBurner. Right. Um, Skype is, we do a lot of video on Skype, but also a lot of IM, um, instant messaging on Skype. So, you know, I've got about 40 or 50 chats you know, going at Holy once. Cow. Yeah, so, um, cause Skype have people all around the world and you can sort of, I can type something in a chat, go to bed, get up the next day, come back, and then all the other people have come in and it sort of comes back, uh, it's all in there. It's like a sequenced, you know, chat sort of thing. So you definitely use that a lot. Um, my business partners on, on Skype as well, obviously. Uh, WordPress, so we all that stuff runs on WordPress, which has been great. It's so amazing that it's great and, and free. Um, 
Any other secret? Any other secret software tools you use that we should know about? Uh, nothing really that no. crazy and, and, and wild. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I live in uh, Google Docs and, and and Gmail, and so sort of do all cloud based. Um, like Gmail is my main email client. Um, which is which is great because I can get on that on anywhere, um, you know, whether it be phone or, or computer or whatever. So. Yeah. so tell me this before I have one final question for you, Jeremy. But before I do that, I ask you, um, I just want you to tell people a little bit more about Vodburner and what's exciting now that you're working on with it. So the exciting stuff um, at the moment is really around the Mac version. Um, a lot of users it's interesting a lot of people that are on Windows also use Mac and they're wrapped that we have it out uh, for Mac even though the Mac version doesn't have editing um, like the Windows one does um, we sort of found that people are generally happy that, that we have that out um, so yeah we're working on uh, new features for the Mac version. We've actually done uh, Retina support for for Mac. So these new MacBook Pros that, that have Retina, um, yeah, we work on on that. Um, and the view down the track is to to bring in more features like editing and and those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the exciting stuff. We also have a brand new website, which is really close to going in. That's been a lot of fun because the Vodburner site was made in 2009 and you can so it's so funny how sites look dated so quickly on the net you know like and I think wow did that actually look good back in 2009 <laughs> so uh, yeah we, we sort of had this cr- sort of crappy looking site for way too long um, so yeah we've got a new one going up um, so where can people well. find so Vodburner.com will be able to find the Mac version at the same site or is there a separate site that people should check it out at? Yeah, so the Mac version is on the... the, I'll talk about the new site because it's like a few days away, but uh, the site actually senses if you're on a Mac or PC and then shows you um, the right version. So it's really nice. Um, It's all on Vodburner.com and it will figure out what's sort of what you're looking for based on the PC you're coming in on. You're doing that because you're, you're a software ninja, so you can do that kind of thing. It senses what kind of uh, computer you have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're uh, software ninjas from down under. Yeah. Um, I have one last question, Jeremy, and thank you so much for this. Uh, obviously, we're using Vodburner right now, and uh, it's working seamlessly. Um, I always get nervous at the end because it's such a good interview that I just want to hit end so that we get we capture everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, my last question is, I, I was amazed one thing is, how do you keep up with all the Skype updates? Because when you build a software that functions on another platform, it's got to be difficult. Yeah, well, that's something uh, Skype have done a lot of updates um, probably in the last six months. Uh, they're like up to 6.3 on Windows now. Right. And, um, yeah, we have to work really hard there. Um, to We get the updates before everyone else. And if the update... So we do a lot of testing, obviously, and, and you know, 6 to 6.1 was fine. We, and then we, in our system, we support the new 6.1. Um but when it's not fine, so there's to be a change in the plumbing, you know, of Skype, we we release a, a new version that supports that. So the idea is that we get the release before everyone else gets that version that, that Skype released, because we get the Skype version early, and then Vodburner will pop up. We approve it. So we've got this system. We approve it, and then it pops up on your end and says, you know, get this new version. Um, where it sort of runs into trouble is people ignore that and right. they get the new Skype they get the new Skype version because it is annoying I mean I, get, I don't like putting updates you know I, I find it 
I know it's necessary, but it's sort of an annoyance, right? Um, it's like using a really strong password. A lot of people just go, oh, too, too hard. I'll just use right. a really crappy password. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we sort of falls over when um, people get the new Skype and they go to record a call and, hey, it's not working. So we put stuff in there now where we pop up again and say, you know, we've noticed you using this new version of Skype. We, the version you have only supports up to this version, but come to our site. It's a free upgrade and, and get the, the, the latest right. one. I mean, and then all the people that come to our site every day and get it, they're always getting the latest one. So they, the one they get will work with all the Skypes. Yeah. It's really for people that are, you know, they got it like a year ago or whatever. Right. I mean, do you have to like stay up all night for like a week straight? I mean, how do you even keep up with that? Uh, depends on what the, what's changed. There has been some crazy times like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've designed VodBurner. Um, so we're hooking into Skype, um, in a, in a, in a fashion where, um, there shouldn't need to be too many changes. And a lot of the new versions they've put out, there hasn't need to be any any changes. But yeah, there has been times, uh, you know, burning the midnight oil. That's mainly my business partner, though. He's he's really great. I'll give him a little plug. Yes. <laughs> well, Jeremy, I want to thank you so much for taking the time, and um, you know, thanks for creating all the great products and and Vada Burner, which we're using now. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, no problem. And I'm glad that you, you, you've been so you've been using Vada Burner. How many interviews have you done now? Uh, probably over 30 right now. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's... Uh, By the time people watch this, probably over 50. Excellent. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> it's really taking off for you. That's, yeah. that's very impressive. But thank you. I appreciate your time, and uh, have fun in Australia. Great. Well, uh, right back at you. Nice to talk to you, Jeremy. Thanks. boy Leo which is the exact same age as your little girl right yeah wait so show him I can't see him on the screen Leo, Leo. this is gonna be this is gonna be in the, the outtakes of the interview so it's your first Skype video online Leo <laughs> he's putting he knows <laughs> I go in my ear see <laughs> that's I'm perfect. not even plugged in at the moment <laughs> who's that Leo what's Leo's favorite software um, Besides VodBurner. Get for my iPhone. He knows how to unlock it now. <laughs> I, love I don't it. know if he, ha- if he does anything more than... Uh, he probably can't eat that. I don't <laughs> know if he does anything more. He just woke up, so he's a bit, you know, dazed.